Alrighty, well hello everyone and how are you guys doing? It is John and I'm here to bring you guys another guide. This time is not so much about RuneScape but more so about Sony Vegas. Now I know a lot of you guys out there are probably aspiring to make some videos or maybe you already make some videos and just want some tips and tricks on how to do certain things in Sony Vegas so I thought I'd bring this guide out for you guys. Basically it's more or less an introduction so if you guys are really experienced with Sony Vegas and everything this probably isn't for you because I'm just going to be going over some basic stuff. If I want to get into some more very advanced stuff in the future, I'll probably make individual videos about that. Basically what I want to teach you guys in this program is the different kinds of formats you should be using for maybe some higher quality or lower quality, depending on what you want to do regarding opening up files as well as rendering. I'm also going to be teaching you some simple editing tricks, some special effects, timing things exactly, so in case you're doing a RuneScape music video that would help out, different kinds of recorders you guys may be interested in, some green screen effects that Vegas has, and also getting that shiz on YouTube. Alrighty guys, now that you kind of know the gist of what I'm making this video for, let's get started. Alrighty guys, I just thought before we go into the more intricate things and detailed things, I'd just kind of go around Sony Vegas and kind of the whole general area and kind of point out different things and kind of give you some more information on to what everything does. Alrighty guys, down here we kind of have your basic time scale where all your videos and your editing is going to show up. And down here we have your kind of normal range of buttons, your play button, your pause button, your loop button. And right down here is your rate button. This is basically how fast your video is going to be played in a certain area. Now I've thrown a little dummy video to kind of give you guys an idea of what everything does. I'm just going to throw in a previous video I had. So we got your play button, which guess what it does? Who guessed that one? Now you play from beginning button, and guess what that does? So you click over here, and you want to not watch the video from right there? Oh my god! So from the beginning of the video, what are the odds of that? Now, we have a previous frame and next frame, which is actually kind of useful in case you're very intricate about uh, things that you want to do in the video. Now, up here is kind of the box where your video is going to show up in a preview of everything that's going to happen. Now, every time I hit next frame, it's going to just very slightly move frame by frame by frame. So it's helpful in case you want to be very, very precise on certain parts of your video. Now this loop playback feature, basically what it is, is if you uh, click on your video, not there, click on your video, ah, like, like this, so you click down below or somewhere where there's not a video, and you just drag somewhere, it creates these little yellow bars, and this is pretty much your looping area in case you wanted to watch something, so let's just say I only wanted to watch this little portion over and over because I'm trying to edit something about it. Well, I Hey, it plays. But if you want to keep watching it over and over and over, you just hit this loop playback feature, and every time you hit the play button here, it'll just loop in that little segment you have there. Now, you can just click anywhere else, and those black bars will go away, and you can continue editing wherever you please. Now, the raid button, uh, it's more of a draw a switch thingy, but uh, <laughs> I, I, basically just how fast it plays, so if I hit the play button and then bring it up, <laughs> so that's basically what happens. Now there's a point where you, you do reach zero, which is right there, so if you bring your rate down here, as you saw earlier, it goes into the negatives, your video will play backwards in that case. Alrighty guys, now up here as you've seen before, this is just like the video preview area. Whatever you edit down here is going to show up up here. We also have our master volume up here, which is basically controlling all the volume in the video. So if that's all the way down and you render, you're not going to have any sound. So be sure you don't do that because I did that once and I had to render for two hours again. It was not fun. Alrighty guys, well the functions up here basically perform the same actions as the functions down here. If you want to play, you that, it's, like, it's basically just going to play from the beginning of the video and of course the master volume. Oh, it masters all the volume. What are the odds of that? So, I'm just going to turn this down, put this back up, and already we're going to continue on. 
Alrighty guys, and just to the left here we have what is the trimming area. So basically what it is, is if you import files, which I'm going to show you in just a second, you can drag and drop into here, and you can basically have the video or the clip that you had before. <laughs> Now what's the difference? Well basically you can just choose different regions of, uh, <laughs> of of the thing up here and you can just drag it down into your video. So let's just say, oh that's the portion I wanted. This this very split second. So what you do is you can take it and you can drag it down here. I'll delete all this and that. And you'd have just that portion. So up here we have and then down here we have the exact same thing. So, that's just kind of this little area. I don't really use it that much because you can basically do the editing up there down in the main area. I know there are probably some other details and certain things you can do up in the trimming area that you can't do down below, but I don't really tinker with it too much because I do just fine with everything down below. Alrighty guys, and to the left, one more time, we basically just have our whole general media area. So it has different kinds of tabs down here, and the first one is project media. This is a spot where basically it'll hold any kind of media, any video footage, any sound footage, any pictures or things that you use in your video. It'll put over here to kind of give you a spot for you to refer back to it. Now we have the Explorer where basically you can go into here and you can search all your different files instead of like physically having to go through the files and find everything you can just open it up right here. Now personally I just keep all my video recording clips on like another screen and I just drag and drop them in but this is a helpful way it really depends all on preference. Transactions this is for different kinds of things between two clips I'm going to be showing you that a little later. Video effects is basically, well, video effects. You can choose different kinds of things for your video, such as inverting it, defocusing it. I'm going to go into these a lot more in detail later on. Alrighty, guys, and finally, we have media generators, which basically is just a way for you guys to create different kinds of things. I'm going to be going to this in more detail as well later on. Alrighty, guys, now we kind of have a general idea of what everything is in Vegas, so let's get started. Alrighty guys, now let's start some editing. We're gonna open this up right here, pull out some RuneScape footage, and uh... what? Oh, that's right, we can't edit video unless we have any. Oh, silly me. Anyway guys, the whole point of this section of my video is to talk to you guys about recording software, things you should use, and also some of the more popular brands out there. Now personally what I use is Fraps because it's one of the better end and higher quality recorders out there but there are a lot of other recorders out there that are free and still have some great quality. One of the most popular out there right now is Cam Studio. Basically you can just go to camstudio.org as seen up here and when you come to this website scroll down a little bit and download Cam Studio 2.6 and also download the codec 1.4 and whatever the latest version is just be sure to download each of them now what the codec is it's basically some extra code and sources for cam studio that way it can have some better quality probably your sounds gonna match it better and all around it just makes cam studio work better now for those of you who have never used cam studio before let's open it up real quick and kinda look over it a little bit Alrighty, for those of you who have never used Cam Studio before, this is its basic layout. You've got your record button, your pause button, your stop button, got a bunch of other different features. I'm going to go over a few of these things with you guys. Now basically what you want to do when you record, especially when you're doing something like RuneScape recording, you're going to want to go to Region and select Window. Now when you hit that and you hit the record button, what's going to happen is it's going to ask you to select a window in which you would like to be captured. So let's just say I want to record uh, the uh, camstudio.org. Let's just say like if you use a browser. So I click on that and it'll it's basically recording right now if I were to open up Cam Studio again to show you guys here's all the little features about what's being recorded right now it's showing you how big the file is uh, the FPS rate how long your files has been going on and when you're all done what you do just hit the stop button and normally what Cam Studio does is it'll bring up a little preview of what you've been recording now from what you guys can see right now this is exactly what just happened it kinda comes out very like nice and crisp for the quality and everything but if you look at my mouse a little bit 
it's kind of not going perfectly with everything. It's kind of like lagging behind. You see, it's kind of jumping from place to place. So it's probably not the best thing that's going on right now for it. But like I said, if you download the codec, it'll definitely help out a lot. The other problem that might be going on right now is I am using Fraps right now to record this while I'm recording a record. So that might also be playing into something right there. I'm not sure though, but whatever you do, just be sure to download the codec. Now coming back to Cam Studio, other things that you can do is you can record all screens or select screen. Now this is for people if you have multiple monitors, that's kind of like what you would do. So if you either want to choose one of the screens or basically record both of them, I've never done the all screen record before because I think that would just be too big of a video. And also fixed region. This is personally what I used to use back before I bought Fraps. Is basically what you would do is if RuneScape was in a certain area, you would just click once. Oh crap, my bad. You would click here and then you would drag it out. So it's going kind of slow right now. And then bam, it would record in this little area right here. So if I hit record and then I hit stop. Bam, there's what I recorded. It recorded a little segment for me. Alrighty. Uh, other features, such as, like, that's not in anything interesting. Alrighty, guys, now in the options, something that I want to show you guys is in the audio settings. The audio options for microphone, that's what I want to show you guys. Now, if you guys don't already have your best microphone or the microphone you prefer to use, that is your default microphone in your computer, you guys are going to have to come in here and manually change it yourself. Now, uh, for the audio capture device up here on top, it'll give a list of everything in your computer that basically can act as a microphone and just go into there and find out which one is your best mic. For me, it is the two Samson Go mic, so I just select that and I would hit OK. And that would set anything I record on here to record me as audio. Alrighty guys, now when you go into options, the next thing you want to do if you want to record a commentary is hit record audio from microphone. Now by default, do not record audio is going to be selected, so be sure to change this before you do anything or else you will not get any audio at all. Select that. Another thing you guys may want to do is if you go into video options, your quality, by default, it's going to be at 70. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bring that all the way up to 100. And also, down here, you don't need to touch anything. It'll try to get the max frame rate possible by default. So bam, we're all good there. Alrighty guys, and that's just pretty much a rough review of Cam Studio in case you guys are interested in getting it. It is a free program, so it is probably the most popular recording software among any of them out there. Now I'm going to go over Fraps with you guys a little bit. Alrighty guys, this is Fraps. This is personally my favorite program to use, mostly because of just how high quality it gives and just how efficient it is basically overall. And I've had no problems with Fraps at all. It is overall just a great program. Now the downside is it does cost some money to get it, so it may not be the most popular choice for some of you guys who may not be able to buy things online or don't feel like spending the money on it, because Cam Studio does just as well. It's not as crisp and as nice quality, but you know what? Whatever works for you guys. Alrighty guys, now the only tab you guys are probably going to be interested in is the Movies tab. Basically what we have in here is we have the folder you want to save it to, the video capture key button, so basically whenever you guys want to start recording a video or stop recording a video, that's the button you're going to want to hit. We also have a choice of FPS, what you guys want to be shooting in. Now what I do want to say real quick is you may choose 60 FPS as what you want to be recording, but the thing is it doesn't exactly record at 60 frames per second. It may record your desktop and everything that's recording at 60 frames per second, but if RuneScape isn't running that fast, you're not going to be able to record that fast. So that's the only downside to it. You can also make a custom FPS if none of these work for you, or maybe if you want to go just a little bit higher. Now basically, guys, my favorite thing about Fraps is how it records both my mic and things that are going on in the computer. And the reason why I like this is because if I'm in a Skype call with someone or from just chit-chatting or something and I want that to be recorded into, like let's just say if I do a Fight a Fan episode with someone and they want to go on Skype with me or anything like that or have a dual commentary or whatever, like the time I had with Jordan, 
It'll record everything that comes out from my computer, so my Skype call, and it will also record things from my mic. So not only am I getting the best quality from my computer for audio sound, I am also getting the best quality from my mic. So it's a win-win situation there, and it is probably my favorite thing. Now, when you guys go ahead and hit your key that starts all the recording and whatnot, which for me is F10, what you're going to see is this little thing in the top left corner. Now, by default, that's where I put it. I'm not sure if it goes into another location but that's just where I've had it forever so I think that might be the default and the way to change it is if you go into the FPS tab you can choose which corner you want to put it in so I'm just kinda of bouncing it around right here you can also hide it completely if you want but the thing you need to know is even though it appears in the, in the top left corner for your re recording session now every time I'm recording on RuneScape and doing PK commentaries that little thing is in the top box for me in RuneScape but it doesn't show up in the actual video quality it's just more less a reference to let you know how fast you're recording at. Alrighty guys, now the downside of the fraps, or maybe it's just possibly something I'm dumb about and I, I just don't understand yet, it's basically I don't know how to change screens or basically choose where I should be recording with fraps. Now basically, like if I go right down here to my start and I hit RuneScape, basically what's going to start happening is RuneScape's going to start loading and la 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 and it's still recording my entire screen now one thing that's gonna happen is if I were to stop fraps and start up fraps again what would happen is fraps would auto locate basically any media that is going on on your computer and it'll realize that it wants to record that basically what it does is it finds the media realizes how big it is and just records in that little area so you people playing on a fixed screen even though there may be some more black at the bottom of your runescape client if that's what you play on it'll only record in the little runescape area alrighty now I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of an example of what fraps can record now I would play this but it would actually stop my fraps for some reason I don't know there's some sort of collision or coding thing I'm not sure what it is but basically as you can see this is raw footage right here of what fraps would record in a runescape client it literally cuts out the entire runescape media and just leaves the game in there it doesn't give you any of the black boxes or the outside or the little X from the little red X or whatever Mac people do what is it to exit a window it doesn't give you any of that now this extra black space basically what it is it's just that's just some like extra space from the recording but that's things that we can easily easily fix inside Sony Vegas Alrighty guys, these are two of the more popular recording software out there. There is a lot more. You just kind of have to find what works for you and whatever you like best. But now that we have some footage and we know how to work with everything, let us start going in and do some basic editing. Alrighty guys, now that you have a recording software, and I would assume you got some recorded footage, let us get into some more of the technical editing stuff. But first and foremost, save... save the nothingness? No. <laughs> but first off, we need to kind of go over and talk about the template of the video, which is basically what this is over here, and how you should set it up when you're starting. Now, in here, this is basically everything that you can choose and change for how your template's going to be. Now, this kind of helps out with the format of how uh, nice the quality is going to be for your video, whether it's going to be HD on YouTube or not. But for the most part, that's more so in the rendering portion. This is more actually how the size of your YouTube video or whatever kind of video you're going to make is. Now, normally what I choose is I either choose 1080 by 60i with 29 FPS or I go up to... where is that other one? There it is. I go to the 720 by 30 p with the 29 FPS. This is the one I normally use because that's kind of close to like what the Fraps records and it's, it's just a little bit nicer. But for right now, you guys may probably be interested in higher quality, so what I'm going to do is I am just going to choose the HD 1080 by 60 i Now the next thing you guys want to be doing is go down here in full resolution rendering. You want to go to best, so that'll give you the best quality. And another thing, for the resample stretch quality what I do is I normally turn this to best I'm not exactly sure how much that changes everything but I just like to have all my settings at the best that they can possibly be 
So once you're done doing all that, hit OK, and it'll give you a brand new template. I know it looks like nothing changed because we haven't done much from <laughs> the empty template, but what we do next is we go in and we grab some footage. So right here, this is from my recent Fight a Fan episode. It's going to take that and drop it in. Bueno. And up here, there's the footage from the video. Now, first and foremost, the number one thing guys and girls need to do with their video is there are these black bars on the side. Now, there are different ways of getting rid of that, but for me, basically what you do is you right click, hit properties. There's this thing called maintain aspect ratio. Uncheck that hit OK, and oh my god, they're gone. It's that easy. <laughs> now, I must warn you, it is not perfect for every format. If you're playing in fixed screen, it'll come out very nice. If you're using like fraps and stuff, it'll come out it'll come out just fine. You'll have no problems at all. But if you're using other resolutions or other sizes, what basically it does is whatever you record in it takes that, throws it in Vegas, and um, that's the size that's going to show up in your little preview box up here in the top. Now, when you say maintain aspect ratio, it's asking you if you want to keep the size of the video that you've put in there. And when you say no, what it does, it's like, okay, then I'm going to take your video and stretch it out to all the corners so it fills it up perfectly. Now, the downside of this is if you're recording in different sizes, sometimes it stretches it too much and it just doesn't look good. So, please be aware of that. Thank you.